What's up guys and welcome back to another video. This one we're down in Grantsville, Maryland. A little gloomy day out. We got Gus, Jen up on the deck, and beneath it a 1959 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88. My, my buddy reached out to me, he said, hey, I got this cabin, a car sitting there. Why don't you, you know, there's plenty of room for, for Gus to go running around and sniffing. So why don't you go take a couple day vacation, try to take a crack at it, get it running. And that's what we're gonna do. So this is a nine acre property, which has got plenty of room for Gus to, to cruise around, run around. There's actually a, a pond down here too, I think. And this is the 59 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88. Love the name of these two. Hey, what, what a beautiful looking rig, I mean. Oh yeah, look at that wide and low stance. Uh, at first glance, you know, no, no cream puff, but definitely doesn't look like a, a rod about vehicle of, of sorts. I'm glad the sun's kind of shining down a little bit. It shows that, that beautiful green original paint, but who knows if it's actually original. I mean, whoever did that paint job though, picked a nice color. And yeah, so for 59, this was kind of mild, these, these tail fins compared to a, a Cadillac. Or, or a Chevy, but I mean, I'd say it's good looking. I love it. So the whole story is he, he bought this from a guy out in Ohio and it's not sure how long it's been sitting. He guesstimates about 20 years based on the stories he was told, but he got a title for it and he ordered a bunch of parts, which he has inside. He just kind of wants to get it roadworthy if the engine runs. It's got the, the Oldsmobile V8 or the, the Rocket. Said it's the uh, 371. He did go ahead and drop the gas tank on it and clean that out on the inside, recode it and everything. So that's uh, that's majorly awesome. I think he said he did the trunk as well. Oh yeah, yeah, he coated all all this uh, rust in here. I mean, there's no come on. This this car is actually in pretty good shape because that's the original sheet metal. A couple little patches and such, but. I don't see any patches down on the sides. I mean, it's looking looking nice. Yeah, I guess that is the, the JB Weld all along the sides. Hey, you know, it gets it done. It gets the job done. Grinding the rust away there. Original insulation in the hood. It's holding on after all these years. Oh, hopefully that opens back up. This just has the key. And there's the, the gas tank fill. He said the Put like nine, 10 gallons in this too. Love that it's got the wing windows and stainless trim all around. I suppose that's actually chromed. Crack in this passenger window. I mean, you guys are just getting to know this right along with me. I didn't look at this at all last night when we rolled up, just kind of had a good time. Let's pop this hood open. Take a look at the more important part. Wow, that is a heavy hood, but the springs still do a good job holding it up. I mean, not, not completely. You might want to get a hood prop on that one, so if that comes down on you. Not going to be a good day, but uh, things are looking all complete and tight under here. Some evidence of rodents coming in. Oldsmobile rocket. Booyah. Let's pull this off, make sure there's no nests right underneath. Looks like somebody, so he may have had this off. Put a new uh, nut and threaded rod on there. Oh yeah. Nice new filter. Fresh, no nests. Looks like a little two barrel. So definitely the 371 would be my assumption. Made in USA. It's amazing they put these little tiny two barrels on these giant V8s. Gotta love it. Plenty of room for improvements. An oil breather. That could definitely stand to be cleaned out. Getting all blocked up and crusty. And I guess let's start with checking all our fluids. Start at the oil dipstick tube. And yeah, not too dark, up to level. Just uh, about an inch down, right at the bottom of the full. Transmission, red, over full, not running, so that's a good sign. I see somebody threw a new fuel pump in at some point. The Purolator mounted right next to the exhaust manifolds. 
and yeah these hoses are kind of crusty but not just they're not breaking in half of course this was the desert you would flex that and it just snap snap right off I wonder if that still works we shall find out although it actually has a factory fuel pump for it too which look at that that is a nice heavy duty rebuildable fuel pump on there a the, uh, delco remy 12 volt generator these are, I believe, along with the Cadillac, one of the first overhead valve V8s or overhead valve engines uh, that were put in these cars. Uh, what, 49, right? So, you know, state of the art for its, its time back then. Of course, I'm no expert, just uh, tinkering around here. Linkage on the carburetor is free. We do have points ignition. I see the condenser over there. You know, just going over all the basics. Uh, power steering. I see something down there. It's not completely empty. No dipstick on it, huh? In the radiator, we got a 15 pound Robert Shaw vent lock cap on it, real high quality. Copper red. And I don't see anything down there, but not very much corrosion at all. It's got the older style voltage regulator with the three solenoids. And I was thinking, where the heck's the master cylinder? Brake master, brake booster. Well, that's enough under the hood for now. Let's, let's go to our interior tour. Let's try and actually bake out this sun. Nice action. Manual windows. Uh, I, lo I love the rounded glass on these, these old 50s cars. That is so stylish. Last inspection was, I, I don't know, it's not Pennsylvania, oh, North Carolina, or oh, NC division of something? I don't know. It's got the old oil change sticker from Sinclair on there. But yeah, as far as the brake booster, Came in here and I said, oh, it's got power brakes. And there's the switch up there. Almost looked like a cable should be up there or something. But, you know, it has uh, the, the brake master down down below here. So press this down on it. Obviously, it doesn't have any brakes. Good action on the accelerator pedal. And I'm not going to dare push the parking brake down, but the cable is free on it. And look at that. It's got the little off switch right here. That all works. One hole in the, the driver's side. It looks like this was all chewed up by probably rodents. Um, yep, yep, there's some droppings down in the seat. Oh, oh, yeah, a little hole there. Uh, but it doesn't, doesn't really smell too bad, you know. It smells like your, I don't know, grandma's closet or something. It doesn't, uh, doesn't smell so bad. I love this steering wheel. Look at this thing. It's uh, never seen that style. The cluster is, I mean, this is in really nice condition. All the chrome, it's not all pitted up or anything. And the temperature up, oh, yeah, all this stuff still works, not locked up. Temperature slides over, fan switch works. This, uh, well, the glove back box oh, this is like three feet long. Look at this thing. Ah, oh, it's missing the back side of it. 22 PSI on the tires, huh? For detailed information, see your owner's manual. Yeah, more evidence of rodents chewing away at all the insulation and some bigger rust holes on this side. But not so bad. Uh, you know, I don't, based on the fact that it doesn't smell, I don't think these rodents were in here recently, but yeah, definitely. A, Lots of droppings everywhere. I mean, come on, that's pretty pretty normal. Luckily, it doesn't seem they got up into the headliner, which is still in good shape. You know, pliable, and all the stitches are still holding on. And when they get up there, and, and then and droppings all come down on the seats, that's that's always fun. Like like on the Ranchero that uh, Javier now has down in Philly. Clock over on the passenger side, apparently. They're the only ones that need to know what time it is. Uh, 57,000 miles, 57,310. I like that it's a two door, a little sporty. And this is you know, plenty of room back here for your passengers. I'd say, unless I'm missing something, that concludes the, the overall tour of it. Or if that dragged on a long time. Uh, again, we're kind of just learning about it together. The windows, you know, those don't work. The wing windows shouldn't, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So that was for the wing window and this, yeah, the window does work. I guess I'll leave that down for now But this wing window. Not that, I mean, you should really lube these up. Oh yeah, look at that. 
No problem. Rubber's still good too. A little tight on that one. Let's get this fired up now. Start with those spark plugs and I suppose cut this off out of our way. Got our workbench right behind us. Tundra full of tools. Got the scooter. All the supplies we could possibly need. He's also got some tools inside too. I don't know if he wants this going but it seems like a hazard and it's kind of in the way. Could always be replaced or glued back in a place if you really wanted. Quick glance at the plugs that came out of it. Some AC Delco R44S. No, no problems I'm seeing. A few of them are a little slugy, like uh, this number five. But yeah, maybe burning some oil. But no, you know, no problems here. So now I'm gonna hit each of the cylinders with a little bit of lube. And let's try giving this fan a little nudge over. <clears throat> Slipping. Both ways. I've got a socket on the crank. Let's give that a go. There it goes. Not seized up. And I'll rotate this over a couple times. Make sure it doesn't jam up on us. New no problems there. Well, time to drop a battery. And did we have keys in here? Didn't notice before. No keys. Put her inside, which time to show you guys the parts stash. So this is his man cave down here, really chill spot, kind of got it all going on. I especially loved the, uh, this old Technics, made in Japan, high quality piece. Listen to the action on it when it goes on. Boom, this is the solenoids click inside. Anyway, uh, that's, that's off topic. He left us a case of beer and everything too, a cool, cooler full of beer. Yeah, we got this this Duracell a remanufactured fuel pump, oil, you know, a Wix filter, some wheel cylinders, the original service manual. We got this on eBay. Check that out. Really, really nice. Uh, he kind of said just use whatever you feel like, whatever you don't feel like, no big deal. So we will grab the battery and get the, the AC Delco R43S's. And we got the keys too. How about it? Yes, it fits. No arcage or fires when we put the negative up. Not really liking the cable routing right now. I don't know if we flip this around, the positive's too short. So I guess maybe these terminals should be on the other side, but no big deal. I think we'll give it a little crank over now just see what it sounds like with the plugs out. And this is the fuel pump wiring. They got like uh, old, I guess, speaker wire running over to that. And I think the mechanical pump's been completely bypassed, but we're not hooked up to the carb anyway. And geez, I mean, he had Rotella in there and a new Wix filter, so I guess maybe we'll, we'll spill and fill the oil too, but let's see if it cranks over. Okay. We got fuel gauge came all the way up, generator light on. Here goes nothing. Oh, yes. That sounds like a healthy starter. And solenoid uh yeah i guess let's let's jack her on up spill out that old oil not that it looked too bad but you know he's got he's got new stuff so why not now let's go check on jen real quick i think she's she's editing up there I did want to show you guys this old wooden boat he has uh i'm not even sure what it is you guys probably know better than me i thought it might have been a chris craft or something but need some work uh it's not all right of that or anything though and then he's got a, I want you to see this, this uh, Chrysler LeBaron under here. Oh yeah, gotta love these. And back in the day, you know, not too desirable, but now this thing is a gem. Oh, there it is, it's a Century. All right, yeah, that's, uh, looks like it needs a little bit of work, but overall, really, really fun looking boat.
Hey, you. Hi. How are you making out? Good. Yeah? Doing your, uh... Good chop. Your good chop? Yeah. <laughs> what are you barking about up here, Gus man, huh? I thought you, like, the car fell on you when you opened the garage door down there. <laughs> yeah, it was a little low, huh? Yeah, I went out to see if you were alive. What are you doing? You want to go out on the deck? Go get him, boy. Ah, oh, so nice. It's like this yes, beautiful view of uh, rolling hills all around you out here. It's a wonder I get any work done. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of nice though, being able to just tinker on it as you please and no rushed schedule of any sort. Can't beat it. As long as he doesn't go tearing up this house. He's being good so far. <laughs> yeah, you're being good. <laughs> Am I supposed to run after them? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> you crazy coo- <laughs> Ow! <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> Sinking a little bit. That's nice and sturdy. Nope, on the passenger front, we got some Sears steel belted radial tire, the uh, road handlers. No dragging on the brakes, no side to side play, or up and down. Got some mud daubers back here, making nests. Uh, but nice and solid on their hair and first glance at the frame. I mean, this is looking beautiful. I wonder uh, if these, these are GR7814s. Patented 1971. But yeah, if I was to guess, these look like 70s tires. And over on the driver's side, we got the Cushion Air, Atlas Cushion Airs. Not seized up, obviously. We pulled this out, but no dragon or anything. And taking a peek underneath. Okay, I got coil spring, front suspension, control arms, good shape. No rust, come on. It's, uh, it's not pissing oil everywhere, just enough to keep everything oil coated a little bit. And this has got the, uh, the wide stance frame, I think it was called, but essentially it's got the GM X frame. And then also rails on the outside too. You can see that one took a, a good hit there at some point. Oh, this frame's got me beat. It keeps wobbling and twisting. Well, let's see. You started out all right, but you've got to add a few things. You've got your two side rails. Now you add more cross members. That gives you more strength, see? Then put the X member right here in the center. Matter of fact, there is the basic design for the frame in our new Oldsmobile. Of course, the real thing looks a little different. The Olds frame has rugged steel girder construction with five cross members and a big X member that gives it a solid brace down the middle. In the 59 Olds, the frame is nine inches wider. That extra frame width allows Oldsmobile to mount the body directly on the frame. That new Olds frame is the best in the business. That why you bought a new Olds, Dad? That's just one of the reasons, son. Just one of them. Yeah, see that big old dent right there, man. This ground is so wet. But I gave her a good shake, you know. With these, we got these blocks. We have extra jack too. It ain't going nowhere. Uh, here's a look at the the master cylinder, and I suppose that's the, the brake booster above it. See some some rust holes down there too. That ought to be replaced. Uh, you know, I can rebuild them, but got a Napa Gold on it. It's definitely an older filter. That's a good thing we're replacing it. Looks like it might have brass freeze plugs. I can't tell if that's light rust or brass, but they're not rotted through. This thing's actually, I mean, I know I've said it a bunch of times, but this is in really good shape. I think he did, he did great on this. I want to say it looked like about three quarter. Yipper, 19.
No big sluggies coming out or nothing. What, babe? Now, and most importantly, no water. A little bit of moisture in the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, you know, no major water coming out. That smells like it's got a lot of gas in it, though. It's not really thin or anything. It's just... Wow, the lubricity. It feels... It just wipes right away from your fingers. It doesn't feel good at all. I'm glad we're changing this. Come on, baby. Yeah, she's going. Nothing worse than a stuck-on filter. I mean, actually, there's many worse things. Of course, my wrist is a little tweaked out right now. I don't know if you guys noticed at all looking at my face in the beginning of the video, but I got a little bit of a black eye again. I actually fell on the electric skateboard the other day and tapped my face on the ground a little bit. That was, uh, that was great. So, left side of my body's a little sore. I kind of knocked myself out, partially. You get the Wix 5149, heavy duty. Made in USA, unfortunately it's got a dent on the side though. That, that won't affect anything. Uh, you know, anytime a filter's upside down, I always like to pre-fill them. Some people argue saying uh, you could put dirty oil into the filtered side of the filter, but uh, especially when an engine's sitting a long time, I'd rather have the thing pre-filled. You're gonna, plus if there's any sediment in say this quart, it's gonna be settled down on the bottom. There's, there's nothing in there. It's good. It's clean oil, guys. Of course, if you see a chunk or something come out of there, then yeah, that wouldn't be good. Like, you know, don't do this with dollar store oil. I don't know. And it's good to go. It's on a slight angle, so we don't want to fill it tippy top. And then fill her up with some freshy. Now we're going to crank it over with those plugs out, let it build up some oil pressure. I don't think the light works because that's not coming on with key on. Keo, EO, and Keo and engine off. And, you know, never a bad idea to prime it with the oil pump whenever possible. Like if it's a, on a four, you pull a dizzy off on the front real easy. Actually, this has a good amount of room too, but uh, next thing would be checking for spark, which I suppose before even checking, we might as well, well, let's just say, you know, I was gonna say, check the points first since those are always, um, Corroded up, but let's see what we got. Break out the handy power probe. Not that you need it, but I mean there. You know, it's nice to have. Convenient. Let's see if we get power going to the coil with the key on. Key -o -e -o. Yep, good power, and it does have the resistor in line to help not burn up the, the coil. And spark. No spark. As to be expected. Like these old cars, you can actually you know, throw a blanket down and sit on top, and not worry about breaking plastic. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just scrape up those points real quick. I scrape the big stuff off with a screwdriver and just polish them up with some emery cloth. Make sure we're making good contact. Should be good to go. Oh yeah, nice and shiny. Ah, good spark now off the secondary. You see this centrifugal dance is nice and free. And I'll drop a couple drops of oil down this distributor oil port to lube the bearings. Along with over on the generator, you got one on the front and back. Probably quite a few other places too. Yeah, we got the plugs back in and top the ATF off with nothing but the best. Peak, pre-diluted, good to go. The uh, power steering, we've topped that off with some ATF. Let's see how much this takes or if it starts dumping out the bottom. So far, she's pretty thirsty. One gallon brought us about an inch down. Well, that's good for now. Suppose let's hear what this sounds like cranking over with compression. Ooh, very healthy. Now we just need to get some gas to the carb and you know, I guess we should take it off first and see what's up, but it's, it's always nice to just throw some gas at it and see how it is. A lot of time, these automotive carbs are fine. 
unlike a motorcycle. I don't know if it's a difference with the aluminum or the fact that this probably had ethanol free when it was stored, but usually, you know, as long as the linkage and everything works and they're not all corroded, usually they're fine. So this little pump, I guess let's see if this works. He's got power coming to it off the ballast resistor and this negative running over. So I'm gonna turn the key on and tap this negative. Yep, look at that, works. Okay, well, assuming he has, oh, just to let that wire go. I don't want this to shoot gas everywhere. This is kind of pointing up right now. So uh, assuming this hose is hooked up to the main fuel line, let's see if it uh, will prime itself. I took out this screen here so I can get the stuff like a little bit easier. I got some fuel hose. It's not really easy. I gotta get a utility truck. Let's see what happens. It doesn't sound like anything's getting picked up yet. Just sounds like it's empty on the other side of this. Listen to that. There it goes. I just sucked on it with my mouth for a second. We got a little prime coming. Oh, come on, baby. Yes, that pump's totally fine. There comes the fresh gas. Let's smell that. Oh, yeah. Uh, not always a big fan of plastic filters under the hood, but definitely gonna drop an inline because we don't know what kind of crud's inside the the hard lines going back to the tank. He said he cleaned the tank, but you know, definitely we'll keep an eye on what comes out of it. And let's see if it will fill up the carburetor bowl and then shut off. Oh, that's leaking. Looks like the carburetor's definitely taking taking gas. Let's see if this float seals off. I'm gonna say that has sealed off, unless it just didn't take any gas at all. Let's give her a quick shot of starting fluid. Give it a rip. Oh yeah, buddy. Quiet lifters are a little noisy, but they'll quiet down. You got it going, huh? Got her going. <laughs> Means somebody put it away running. I was just tapping the throttle a little bit here. Happy little thing. I know that ticking comes across really loud on camera. It's, it's usually never as loud in person. Uh, it definitely sounds like on bank number one. And you guys hear the exhaust leak down there too. We got a broken bolt. And you can hear it's missing on one cylinder. It's not hitting it the whole time. Quieted down, listen to it. You hear the pumper is not good in the car, but no more lifter noise. However, you hear this over here the uh, fuel pump is ran dry, so either there's not enough gas in the tank or the pickup's wrong. Yep, you know, there it goes. That was running for about 15 minutes, though. Didn't overheat. And uh, it all ran good. Let's find out what's going on with the gas. He said he put nine gallons in there, but it seems like it just ran out of gas. I don't know. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely got gas in there. See, painted all top of this. But we ain't got an issue with the pickup. Or it's possible the pump's going out and just lost its prime. So it runs, and it runs good. Uh, a lot of time with these will it run videos, I'll see comments that people are like, oh, don't offend us, you know, of course it will run, anything will with a little attention or what have you. 
But I think that the point of these videos is like, you know, was this guy told a true story who he bought it from that it ran when it was parked 20 years ago, 10 years ago? I mean, whatever it is, that's what this proves. And as far as that, that uh, lifter noise, you know, some guys will, I, I'll see comments to say, hey, you should be priming the oil system. You know, listen, if this was an aircraft engine, we, we'd be doing that. But it's an old Oldsmobile V8, Rocket V8. Uh, you don't, you don't have to. And quite frankly, I don't think that that noise would have been there no matter what, because it had to run for 15 minutes. Poured some Marvel Mystery in there, gets it fully warmed up before that uh, lifter finally pumped up and the noise went away. But it is sounding very good. Still has that slight misfire. Uh, the, the next big thing, aside from the fuel tank, would be brakes. You know, we need some brakes because there's a lot of hills around here. Like, you probably can't see it on camera, but if I went down that with no brakes, uh, it wouldn't be good. Things probably end up hitting a tree. It is uh, it's a good runner and definitely worthy of a partial restoration. You know, really a full restoration too, but what fun is that? I mean, come on, you, you can't, as I always say, you can't buy a paint job that looks this good. This, uh, this thing tells some stories. Got the pump working again. Just needed to replace the hose clamp on the bottom. Let's fire this back up. Let's see if it's charging. Power steering. Oh yeah. I mean, you can turn it with your pinky, no problem. Look at that. Points dialed in too. Oh, yeah, they're pretty much where they had to be, actually. And for charging voltage, 14.4. Nice and healthy. How about the horn? Well, I can hear it wanting to go, though. Right here. Yeah. Here's that relay. There it is. Both horns. Oh, man, that's a... That's a man's man horn. Wow. That is the best factory horn I think I've ever heard on any vehicle. I think she's taking a shower, actually. She's probably like, what the heck is going on out there? Here he is. Who let you out? Wait, we gotta wait. Hey, hey. Get away from mommy. Come on. You ready for the horn? Yep. Huh? Oh. Isn't that awesome? It sounds like a school bus or something. Yeah. Sounds like a horn should. Anyway, let's go for a little walk. And then maybe get the brakes working on this tomorrow or later. So we're know. not driving it tonight? No, not without the brakes. Yeah, there's too many hills here. Now let's go find this dog. I don't even see him. There he is. Come on, Gus. Good boy. Oh, you still have the rope on you in there? We got tangled up. <laughs> it's like a bunny. Hopping around like a little bunny rabbit he is. Oh, he found a stick. So this is where all the noise was coming from at night. A million frogs out here. Yeah, stopping in this little place, uh, front porch bar and grill. It's like a friendly little establishment. So the kitchen was closed here, but we're gonna go hit another spot, right? What's it called? Anchor Inn? The Anchor Inn. Life happens, beer helps. Yes, that's their motto. Good food, good times, good people. Why is inn only spelled with one N? Look at that. Because it's a play on words. It's like Anchor Inn. Oh, I get it. I get it now. We kind of splurge, got a little mini pizza, club, a bunch of wings, mozzarella sticks, I'm sorry, onion rings. Apparently we got skimped. We're missing one wing. However, it's just been dropped in, so it's it's on the way. And by the way, this is what I ordered, and this is what Chris ordered. Chen's playing with dominoes. Gus is getting sleepy. Oh, so cute. All right, next afternoon, let's find out how she does on a cold start. About 60 degrees out. 
And then we'll go see if it goes in a forward reverse and then take a look at the brakes. Uh, I got the choke adjusted to where when it's cold, the, the flap is shut. That's about as far as I, I went with that. Maybe choked a little too much for a cold day. Yeah, it's uh, it's dumping fuel. What? Fired right up. There it is. Cleared out. Mr. Reliable. Gus up there barking. He got a carb kit for this, but it's running so well that I don't see a reason tearing into that at this point, especially without having the proper facilities to clean it out right, you know. All right, goes drive. Oh, yeah. And prefer. Let's try out this emergency brake real quick, too. Um, yeah, that engaged nice and comes up fine so even if they lock we'll just go pull the air drums let's see what happens uh we put it in gear now all right parking brake works nice Slightly more level over here. In front of that garage, it's uh, tilted. Probably can't see it too well on the camera, but when I was jacking it before. So on these brakes, uh, there is a look at the brake booster. And this is the vacuum line going to it. And then down below it uh, is this small single service master cylinder. This is the fill for it. I was just looking up reman ones. They're like seven, $800 online. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and just pop this one out. You guys already know this single service brakes are no joke if you've ever you know, lost uh, brakes on one pretty scary and in here we see this is the bellow and, and you can kind of see into the vacuum brake booster there it seems like this rod it doesn't go any which direction it's just seized into place it's actually supposed to rest on the bottom of the, the pedal right under here to activate the switch up there you'd have to be all the way up here i, I can't see See that though, that seems just goofy. I don't know, that seems like a hazard where you bump it with your foot and then you got no brakes. Like, I have no idea. I've never worked on these before, but. There are the brakes on these Oldsmobiles. They got the, uh, the air scoop drums on them. Stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Does your car have stopping power? Here's what happens inside a typical moving wheel. As the brake lining contacts the drum, friction is created to slow the turning wheel. But this friction also creates heat, so it builds up so intense that it can actually warp the brake drum and greatly reduce braking efficiency. But Oldsmobile's air scoop brakes, standard equipment on all four wheels, are built to take it. Yes, just as Oldsmobile is famous for its rocket engine go power, it's also respected for the stopping power of its exclusive air scoop brakes. Yes, quite the technology for 1959. Big old air scoop on here to keep the drums cool during braking. Air scoop brakes, kind of cool. Of course, uh, disc brakes came out shortly after, or became the norm. It's nice we have a little port for inspection. Good linings on the front, all the way around. Don't see any separation. And actually, same on the rear. What's going on over here? Oh, geez, this little 12 volt vacuum. Somebody uh, actually sent it to the PO box. So, we're, I mean, it's no shop vac, but it works for, for light duty stuff. Like I was just sucking a little bit. And it's got this little filter and look at all that junk it just sucked up. No matter of like 30 seconds. That's good for light duty stuff. Vacuuming up the mouth turds. And some foam. You dab it. You don't rub it, you dab it. What movie is that from? Oh, look at that power. It, it's good for the dust, though. Yeah, I mean, it's 
Dave Wood's gonna comment. He's a he's a vacuum cleaner kind of sort. I never knew that about him. Is that burlap? Yeah. Is that what they used to put under the, yeah, they the used all fabric, the, uh, vinyl? Uh, holistic material back in the day. You know, cow hair, horse hair filling, and what, what have you. Let's give this a go. Josh, watch out. Bottom. That's the way I like to see it done. My first thought is this thing is completely shot. Looks like there was, I don't know. Let's... Yeah, I mean, this thing is a full rebuild. You see it's been leaking brake fluid, corroding it, and uh, brake fluid has swelled the rubber on here too for the brake booster. And oh, yeah, actually this whole thing looks like it's supposed to slide up and down in here, huh? That would make sense. Basically a lost cause in this. Uh, my buddy who owns this car was just looking him up. $400 for a rebuild kit or $700 for a rebuilt unit. I'll just put this back together for now. And unfortunately, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get brakes today. I mean, could have assumed that the other day just by looking at this thing at a glance. And really when you have the single service masters like this, uh, you should switch them over to a dual but i don't, I don't know what any, how many options there are for these i suppose he can he can look that up well the dipstick's not all rusted up so i'm sure this thing easy rebuild well easy rebuild with the right parts and a, a shop who's over here boy who's over here oh he just loves it That <laughs> slippery slope will get you, huh? Boy, boy, yeah. I was just telling Jen about how these air scoop brakes, braking technology, rocket science stuff back in the day, and this Ultra Bills commercial was like, go, stop, stop, go, go, stop. We don't just go, we stop. Stop, go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. Does your car stopping power? What is it? Is that good stuff? Is that good for the rolling? So he said he's going to send that out to get rebuilt. I told him I might as well order four new wheel cylinders too. But let's just uh, take one of these off and see what they look like. Yeah, he's in good shape. Plenty of meat left. Uh, yep, I would definitely replace the wheel cylinders though. They're uh, a bunch of crud behind there, which means you know they're, they're rusted in the bores. And you can definitely tell this was stored indoors because they're not all rusted up. I mean, you can see the shoe rust imprints, but uh, look at that, uh, ball bearings too, instead of Timken taper roller bearings. Old school. And there's a, a close up at the the air-cooled brakes, easy job to replace these and no separation on the linings. These actually have a, a groove down on the primary shoe. I guess to let you know when to replace them. I wonder if you can easily upgrade these to Timken bearings too. Definitely it would be a good idea to ditch the ball bearings. I mean, when the Timken roller bearings came out, it was like state of the art because 
Yeah, you gotta figure a ball bearing, there's so much less contact and they, they wear much quicker, I suppose, versus, you know, the, the rollers. You get to all that contact across the entire roller bearing. Well, it turns out I got two cotter pins. I guess one was floating around in the, the cap and I didn't see it. Yeah, it makes sense, there's some, some scores in there. That weirded me out for a second. I'm like, this isn't the same Connor pin. Maybe that's like an old timer trick. Leave a spare one in the cap. <laughs> I don't know. Never seen that before. So as dumb as it sounds, I'd love to still go drive this somewhere, but even getting up this hill, like I think it's all pretty much hills uh, above here too. <laughs> Like, if it stalled going up this, I mean, you'd be in trouble. This darn scooter's barely making it up. And you come out, and well, even these aren't perfectly flat, so. Actually, uh, at the back of his neighborhood, I think this state line road is the Pennsylvania border, since we're technically in Maryland right now, but just behind it is uh, Pennsylvania. Let's go check it out. Yeah, it's a state line road. Oh, Pennsylvania on this side. Probably on private property, who knows. And now we're in Pennsylvania on this little Pennsylvania trail. I think this leads back into the neighborhood somewhere too. A little bumpy, a little bumpy for the scooter. I just don't want the rear wheels to lock up on the grass and go flying through these trees. So we'll just be safe about it. The only thing you need to know is that brake. If you feel like you're going too fast, just push that brake harder. Yeah, you see? You gotta push it real hard, but... Is that... What? Is that latched? Yes, yeah. Just gotta make sure I keep constant tension on there because I don't want to slack to happen and then all of a sudden it rips the strap, you know? We're rolling. Ah, we're past the hard part. Doing great, baby. <laughs> Gus, you're <laughs> fine. It's just the tires, boy. <laughs> this is quite the joy ride. Okay. Alright, hit the brake now. Hey, you did good. How was it? It was good. What was your plan if all else failed? <laughs> I was tucking and rolling and jumping out the oh car. Oh my gosh, and just send us down into the lake. <laughs> steering here no problem Gosh, dang it. how are you do you own this car all 
Okay, we got to prime again. Jen thinks she can push a 5,000 pound car. Okay, give it some. There it is! Got her going again! This one legger has no traction on the grass, but boy, is it a smooth ride! I know that don't look very steep on camera, but uh, you know, with momentum it made it up fine. Although if it stalled, then I don't know, it wouldn't have been pretty. <laughs> So I did want to mention on these pumps, the main reason we're having a problem with, with it losing prime is they're designed to be mounted down at the gas tank and push fuel. They're, they're not really designed to pull a vacuum. I mean, they will, but this also doesn't have a return. So as you get a little bit of vapor lock in there and pressure in the lines, this thing cannot pull a prime. That's what that problem is. And he, he does have the new fuel pump for it that I was considering putting in, but we don't uh, have a flaring tool or hard lines to, to do that properly right now. So we'll leave that for the future. So that's uh, the first of that car. Maybe see it again in the future. You know, will it run? Yes. Will it drive? Yeah. Will it stop? No, not really. Uh, so that one, this would need a lot more work if we were to have done a fly and drive. I mean, would have been uh, we would have been stranded for a little while trying to get the, the parts for those uh, for that master and then redoing all the braking. But what a, what a wonderful, super cool car. We're really happy to mess with it. So thanks very much, Jim, for having us over your place. Uh, we're gonna go head down to Ohio pile now and grab some dinner and, uh, and that's it. Gus is over there eating something on the ground, being a good boy. Oh, he's chasing flies now too. That, uh, that was off topic from the outro, huh? I just wanted to see the thing move and we did that. So I'm happy. Yeah, that was very fun, worthwhile. Oh, let's just, let's roll a log down this just to show you in case the hill doesn't come across. Look at that. Look at that. It's a hill. What are you, five? Oh, I got a busy now. <laughs> this is not exactly round. It's kind of oval. But if we try place it here, yeah. Once you get going. Picking up speed now. That's, it's very <laughs> steep. Trust me. <laughs> <gasps> this is the Yakagani Lake, I think. Well, the Yakagani River, but this is the lake portion, dammed up. And we made it. Ohio Pile Bore Burrow. <laughs> What do you think of that, Gus?
Apparently we're not here during the busy time of year. We stopped into this little place and uh, they had no bathroom. Jenna had to walk all the way down there. I'm sure she's super happy. How was your half mile walk to the bathroom? That good? So next afternoon, last day in paradise. A few last minute things on this rig. Uh, went ahead and replaced the regulator since you know this one's old, crusty, and he already had the new one. Replaced the dry rotted belts. Got some nice made, actually, well, it's a Gates made in USA, and then this one, Heco and India. I just polarized the generator. Let's see if this charges with the new one. I'm at 12.4 volts. And charging looks like 13 and a half at idle. Bring this up a little bit. Comes up to 14.5, so I'm good with that. All right, we got Jim here at a pallet owner. Just fired up. He's ready to drive to town with no brakes. Cigarette layers at work. It's working. <laughs> Heck yeah. Look at that view. This thing will be on the road, cruising around Pennsylvania, Maryland in no time. Come on, Jimmy, put it in gear. No, don't put it in gear. It's got no brakes. Yeah, no gear. Hey! <laughs> at least 15 or 20 years, which, you know, is a true testament to the quality and craftsmanship of these old vehicles. <laughs> hey, Gus, you leaving your favorite spot? has sniffed his trail all the way over to this one section and he brought us to a fox's den. I don't know how well you can see them. But there's about four I see down in there. And I just wanted to chime in here at the end. Thank you guys very, very much for tuning into these videos. Uh, Jen's got a new video going up today, 5 p.m. So if you're watching right now, it's up right this second or already up for that matter. Uh, I've been, been doing a lot of work with the garage stuff. That's uh, up and coming video, probably on the, on the second channel. I, I'm not sure, but been recording a lot with that. The, the next video will be on the Suburban though. So maintenance, I know I keep talking about that. And Gus Mann's liking, sniffing all the fresh new dirt. All right, buddy. Thank you guys all so much for the support recently. And yep, see you in another video, hopefully within the week, maybe two tops, but see you soon.